<laughs> I know, I know, I know, but I can't come today because um, Sam's here and, and my dad and dad's working, so. I know, I know it's the last day of summer, Melissa, but I'll see you at school tomorrow. We can do some of your recess, okay? Okay, bye, Melissa. Bye. Gabrielle back in his cage. Doc, did you take my phone? You're in trouble. No, I'm not. Come on, lunchtime. You are such a thief. You want a sandwich? You making lunch? Sure. Hello. Is your mother home? Who are you? I've come... I'd like to interview for the nanny position. The nanny? Okay, um... Oh, well, I, I tried to call, but the number was busy and the address was on here. I think you better talk to my dad. Come in. You sound like Mary Poppins. I'm English. I knew that. Who's she? That's Sam. Hello, Sam. I said two of them out. I'm four. How wonderful. I'm Jillian. And I'm Doc. That's short for Rebecca. I'm ten. Hi, Doc. Hi. She's a nanny. You know, like Mary Poppins. Right, Sam <laughs> It's in my case. Come on. Dad's this way. Hey, Dad. She's a nanny. Uh, hello. Hello. I'm Jillian Malcolm. I was hoping to interview for the nanny. She knows Mary Poppins. Really? I'm sorry, I, I did try to call. And you know Barney. Come on, feeding time. Good luck. Don't you just hate precocious American kids? Oh, not yet. This is my first interview. I keep forgetting to break her will. I beg your pardon? My kid. Break her spirit, like breaking a horse. It's a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. The notice said you wanted a sense of humor. It's okay. My wife's got the sense of humor. I keep trying. She's not home. Oh, sh should I come another time? Dad, you want me to show her the house? Where would I be without her? Oh, what a wonderful room. Mm. It's so wonderful. I keep saying that. It's okay. Originality is only 5% of the grade. <laughs> Do you have a cook or a housekeeper? Any. And uh, this is the uh, uh, nanny's room. This is so lovely. When did your nanny leave? She didn't. We never had one. The most difficult part of the job will be taking care of our daughter. Oh, no. Rebecca's delightful. Not Doc. Our other daughter. Oh, she must be out with your wife. Well, should I wait She's for not them? out. Come. Asleep? She's not home. Our other daughter is Maggie. She's five years old, and she exists only in the mind of my wife. Miss Malkin, if you think you might want this job, I want you to know how seriously I take the subject of Maggie... She's the most important part of your job. Maggie. Let's go see if she's still here. Okay. You've been talking about my sister. Maggie, that was mom. Maggie starts kindergarten tomorrow. I start preschool. 
That's nice. Doc, don't you and Sam have something to do? Come on, Sam. I want to see how hard I can hit you with the ball. Doc's going to teach me and Maggie how to play catch. I hope you take the job, because I could use some help. I I'm afraid that I... I don't understand. I'd be amazed if you did. Maggie is five years old. Sam is four. Sam thinks he has an invisible sister. And he thinks she has a five-year-old daughter. Doc and I pretend to see her. That's Annie. Sam, we're raving about you outside. Well, Doc's right. You're wonderful. Oh. You're perfect. Perfect. Oh, yes. I just put up the notice today, and you're the first to come. Oh, oh I see. And you're so far from home. You're very brave, isn't she, Tim? Certainly is. Well, you won't be lonely with us. Look. I don't have any references. I've never been a nanny before, but I i raised all my younger brothers and sisters. The youngest just turned 15. Um, my mum's been kind of sick, you see, for a long time. You're perfect. And I'm glad that you don't have any references because we've never had a nanny and you've never been one, so we'll learn together. Isn't that right, Annie? Sure, uh, Annie. It's $400 a week, plus room and board and Use of a car and two days off, of course. Oh, that's... But maybe you want to discuss this. Annie, why don't we uh, give Jillian a call in a day or two and let her know? And she probably wants to think about it, too. Don't you, Jillian? Oh, but honey, she just arrived. She has no place to stay. Do you? Your car in the driveway, it's full of suitcases. Oh. She doesn't have oh. Oh. <laughs> Maggie, this is Jillian. Jillian, this is Maggie. Hello, Maggie. It's nice to meet you. Did you leave the front door open again? I did! Oh, kids, don't run! Oh. Well, did Tim show you your room? Yes, he did. Is it all right? Oh, it's wonderful. Good. Then it's settled. Um... Okay, well, Doc, you help me unload the car, and uh, Jillian, you'll want to unpack. And just let us know if you need anything, okay? Okay. Is this all right? Welcome to the family. Are you unpacked? Mm-hmm. Do you like it here? Oh, it's like a dream. Do you live in the country in England? No, London. Big city, huh? Hey, you forgot to push. Come on, you don't hear Maggie complaining. Yes, I do, especially about vegetables. Okay, come on, Maggie, no hitting. Stop it, Sam. She punched first. Sometimes you got to separate these two. Do you mind pushing Maggie a while? Um, no. Thanks. Come on, Sam. What are you doing? Pushing Maggie. Maggie's in her room taking a nap. Your father told me that I know Maggie's not real. <laughs> right. I do. 
She takes a lot of naps. And how does one know? You don't always know. Um, Jillian, why don't you sit here next to Maggie? Sam, Maggie, dinner. Sam, did you two wash up? I did, Maggie did. No, you did. He's just teasing. Mm. Mashed potatoes are my favorite. Maggie, would you say grace? Amen. 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 Doc's stealing Maggie's food. I was cutting her broccoli. Okay, Sam, eat your own food. Don't worry about Maggie and Doc. So, you come from a large family? Um, five kids. I I'm the eldest. Thanks. And you raised the others? My mom couldn't, you see, and my dad passed away years ago. What's passed away? Died. I heard daddy's with the angels. How old were you when your mom got sick? I was about ten. And you stayed until the youngest could take care of themselves? That's very unselfish. You postponed yourself. Honey, she may not want to talk about this now. No, it's, it's fine. Um, I wouldn't say I was unselfish or anything that grand. Of course not, but you are. And now it's your turn. I'm sure your mother agrees. What's her name? Emma. Emma. Have you called her to let her know that you're here? No. Oh, well, let's call her right now. Honey, it's about 3 a.m. there. Oh, that's right. Well, please call her first thing in the morning and let her know that she can call you collect whenever she misses you. That's very nice, but... You haven't been away from home, have you? Um, I went to Loch Ness once. Hold still. It's an eyelash. Okay. I got it. See? Now it's good luck you gotta make a wish and blow it away. Oh, no, come in. This is a busy time. I've gotta put Sam to bed. You give Maggie her bath. She'll tell you where everything is. Uh, Maggie, you can take a tubby in mommy's bath. She's learning. We gotta help her out. All right. Um... She likes the water a little hotter than work. It's been an interesting day. Oh, I don't know. You think? Why'd Mom do this? I don't know. Me either. You have that look. What look? Your crinkly look. I have that? I don't know why Mom did this. I don't know if Jillian can handle it. It's a lot to ask of somebody. Why do we need her? Mom does everything for Maggie anyway. We have to trust there's a good reason. Like we trust there's a good reason for Maggie. Exactly. Like we do that. People grow and change, Doc. Even parents. Nothing stays the same forever. Sweet dreams. Love you. I love you too. Lots of new children, and there'll be lots of new toys and things to play with. Oh, um, did I get soap in your eye? Oh, good, I, I thought I did. I went up to the museum site today. Without me? You rat. So what'd you think? Well, all those skinny columns, um, looks kind of like a giant bicycle rack. I'm kidding. It's breathtaking. Really. A bicycle rack? <laughs> so what do you think? It's intentional. I like bicycle racks. Of Jillian. She'll be great. I'm sorry I surprised you. 
I was going to interview a few before I said anything, because maybe I wouldn't find the right person, or maybe I would change my mind. I had no idea you wanted help. It just seemed time, I guess. I mean, you've been so patient. And I thought we could use somebody. Then maybe you wouldn't have to work at home so much, and you could go back to your office if it's still there. Wow. Have I been complaining? Because. I'm fine, really. You never complain. Is everything okay? Sure. And Jillian will be fine once she settles in. Okay, Maggie, your turn. Jelly. Sam gets milk. Maggie gets juice. And Doc? She makes her own because she has to get ready first so she can catch the bus. Okay. Sam, Maggie, let's go. No, Tim. We have an Annie now. Jelly will drive them. Well, I always drove Maggie. I know you did, but now we have Jillian. Uh, well, how do we know she can drive? Because I drove her this morning. She did first. You drove this morning? Yeah, not early. Well, how's she going to find the school? Don't forget to eat Maggie's lunch. That's what Dad did. Okay, Doc. I'm gonna drop you at the bus. Have fun, you two. Hey. You are so beautiful. I bet. They should be getting out any minute. I could have done this. I know, but it's Sam's first day of school, and I've never had a nanny before. I guess I have to ease into this. Of course. You know, if you want to come and talk to your friends... No, that's okay. Tim always drove Maggie to school. I don't really know anybody. Bye, children. See you tomorrow. Bye, Bye. 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 your day of school? Good. Do you like your teacher? She's nice. I made you something in school today. You made this? I have a machine. Well, Do you like it? I love it. I really love it. Do you want one? Oh, I'd love one, Sam. But can't say mom. <laughs> All right. How did you make it? They have this machine that can make any kind of button. That's it's great. It's like these. Did you have a good day? Did you make new friends? Yeah. It's nice, Sam. Okay, let's go down the slide. Careful. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Good job. Are you okay? Good. Mom! Maggie said I could play in the sandbox with her. You tell your sister I said, if she doesn't stop saying that, that she can't play in the sandbox. 
Okay. She has to go to the bathroom. I'll take her. I'll go with you. Sam, we're going to show Jillian where the bathroom is. We'll be back in one minute. Oh, it's okay. I'll watch you. There we go. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. You from London, eh? Yes, you from London. Within the sound of Bow Bells. I'm Peg. I'm Jillian. It's nice to meet you. Come on, Matt. Let's go. Yeah. Do you want a family? I think so. It's so odd to me. There are so many people in the world who live alone. It's just foreign to me. I've never been alone. The most alone I've ever been was on the flight here. I could never have done that. Why did you? Partly for the money. Shh. And partly because if I'd stayed at home, I knew what my life would be, more or less, before I'd even lived it. We'll be right here, honey. Oh, if you're not going to use that, my daughter's in there. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> you got another kid? dragon could throw it down? Wouldn't the soldiers stop him? They can't see him. The dragon's invisible? <laughs> like Maggie. Oh. Can you hear the dragon? Of course when it's roaring, I just can't see him. My mom can see Maggie. I do sometimes. But I always can hear and I always can feel her. Especially when she punches me. Maggie's different. actually used to wear this stuff. Watch it. I never saw you move like this. You and Dad should go out sometime, dancing or something. What? I leave you guys alone? Are you nuts? Oh, my beautiful Rebecca. <laughs> hey, are you still up? Bedtime, Doctor. Oh, come on. Let me have one more chapter. Please, please, please. Bedtime. Sam seem like he's coming down with something? Mm-hmm. He caught it from Maggie. Right. You were going to say? <sighs> Nothing. I'm just thinking. About Jillian? It's been three weeks. And every time she takes Sam and Maggie to school, she just opens the door and lets them out. As opposed to? Locking them in. How do you know? Because I've been following her. Oh. <clears throat> Other than that? She's great. Oh, over there we have the little tart Caroline. She's a Georgia peach. Pit, that is. 
spent most of her time in the pool with her gaff stepson. In this Ramona, over there. Oh, I told you not to let go. She's Romanian. Nanny for life. Rules the roost. Temper on her like you won't believe. They love her. They bought her a house. Her own house? She'll have a party now and again. I'll take you. Gillian, we've been chums now. What, a couple of weeks? Uh-huh. Wonder silly question. Far away. What's with the swing? Invisible friend. Nice to have a little playmate, isn't it, Sammy? <laughs> you and your friend want to come over to the sandbox and play with Matthew? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Maggie. She's not going to hurt you. Can Maggie save your truck? You can just dump it in the sand. Sure, get it. I told you, Maggie. He's nice. Tell you one thing, Jill. American men have got it over the Brits on two counts. Great teeth and great bums. <laughs> have you found yourself one yet? Oh, um, I don't have much free time. Oh, don't let these Yanks work you to death. Peg. Yes, love. How would you describe a nanny's responsibility? Oh, easy. Try to keep the little buggers from drowning. Try to keep yourself from drowning them. What if there was some kind of situation? Situation? Scandal? You're not pregnant, are you? Stop. It's for a friend. Oh. Depends. Americans are very fond of shrinks. You know, egg doctors. <laughs> I've read that. They hang their dirty laundry anywhere. Thrive on telling each other the most intimate details. So what, do you go to one of them for advice or something? If that's the kind of trouble you think you're in. But I don't need the money, Mum. Because they provide everything, really. I, I don't need money, and you do. Right, next month I'll keep some. Is Sally checking in on you every day? I'm not worried, I just love you. No, no, you don't. <laughs> Come, ah, she's going. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm happy. Really. She got away again. Okay, we'll get you next time. Yes, I, I miss you too. Yeah. Pass it into the deepest part of the pot. <laughs> it is fun to be sick a little in this school. A day for us. But you're really fine now, so tomorrow, school. Okay? I'm thirsty. Are you? English cooking. I love this. <laughs> it's good of your mum to let me do this. You blow her socks off. Can I help? Does that make it less English? <laughs> Don't be such a twit. Um, you can stir that pot. Okay. Doc, I was thinking. You get two weeks vacation at Christmas. Mm-hmm. Well, your parents gave me a ticket home to be with my family. I'll have to hurry on your present then. When are you going? Um, in four weeks. And I was wondering if you'd like to come with me and have an English Christmas. Why would I want to leave here? I thought perhaps you could use the rest, get away. From what? 
Well, the stress. What stress? Of Maggie, you know. Why would I need to get away from Maggie? Maggie's not real. Here come seconds. Great meal, Jilly. Mm. This is really delicious, Jillian. Oh, I'm so pleased you like it. Sam's doing fine. Doc, some more Yorkshire pudding? I'm pretty full. Oh, perhaps Maggie would like some. Wonderful. Mmm. Pudding doesn't taste like dessert. <laughs> it's a different kind of pudding, honey. It's fantastic. It's a great meal. I could have never made this. <laughs> oh, it's easy. In fact, it's easier when there are more people. That's it. A dinner party. You, you could invite your friends and I'll cook. An English feast. Yeah, a party. That's a wonderful idea, Jillian. It's really nice of you to offer, and I'm sure it would be fun. It's just, I'm pretty tired when I finish work, and this house is sort of a retreat. Sorry to be an ogre. She just pricked her finger on a thorn. Be careful. Okay. Perhaps we should start again. I'm sorry. I guess I don't know how to do this. But you do know how to talk. That's all we do here. You say you didn't come here for yourself, but for the family who employs you. Yes. How did you find me? The telephone book. Do you know anything about psychiatry? Not much. Normally, when someone comes to see a psychiatrist and they claim they're coming for someone else, usually they're lying. I don't lie. And they say that. Look, these people need help. All right, let's say I believe you. Your concern's misplaced. What do you mean? I shouldn't worry? It's the four-year-old boy you should worry about. The older child knows the sister isn't real. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say, probably, this fantasy is bonding her closer to her father and her mother. It uh, allows her to help them. And her sense of reality is probably, more or less, unimpaired. Uh, this might even enrich her in some way. Oh. However, the four-year-old, his sense of reality is impaired. He has no way of distinguishing between what is real and what isn't. Oh, God. <sighs> what should I do? In a case like this, someone may need to intervene. The family clearly won't. I can't. We have governmental services that can provide assistance. You could talk to someone there. That's really all I can say. I'll only charge you half the hour. I could use a little time to myself. Whoa. Oh, that's wonderful, Sam. Guess what kind of whale it is. Um, baby beluga? No. Monstro? Is it Moby Dick? 
rainbow whale who forgot his rainbow? Maggie, Mommy already said that. Hi, this is Wood. I'm, I'm Tim Beeman. Hi. My wife, Annie. Hi. Hello. Our daughter, Doc, and this is our nanny, Jillian Malkin. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. And this is my sister, Maggie. We noticed you were demonstrating some puppets over there. Uh, could we take a look? Oh, of course. Sam made a wonderful one. Sam, you want to show Mom and Dad your puppet? Okay. Come on, Sam. Thank you. Come on, Mom. Come on, Maggie. Rebecca, how are you, dear? I remember you. Fine, thank you. My nickname's Maggie. We will, Maggie, just a minute. Sam, we're going to go next door for a minute. Do you want to stay here and we'll come back and get you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tim, I don't see any of Maggie's drawings. Well, maybe they got lost. Maggie's drawing. Oh, Maggie. It's beautiful. Oh, of course, let's put it up. Hi, Janelle. Did you show your mom your artwork? Yeah, it's beautiful. Shouldn't we talk? Mr. Felix? I'm Annie Beeman. Oh, hello. Hi, I just wanted to tell you how much I admire your work with the children. Oh, thank you. I see how you encourage their imaginations and stimulate their curiosity. Uh, that's very kind of you. You're... Would you excuse me for a minute? Mm -hmm. Mr. Felix. Oh, I'm going to up. up. Oh, honey, oh, let's go. Um, Jillian, can you go get Sam? Sure. Let's go. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs... Doc, okay? Fast asleep. Annie. Hush. been there three months. You must have some idea what caused her to create this psychosis. I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense because in every other way, she's so normal. Could he abuse her? Or them? And you're just not aware of it? Of course not. They are wonderful people. Mr. Beeman is a, a saint, and so is she. She lives in fantasy, and he enables her to do it and makes their ten-year-old help. That's wonderful. You make them sound awful. You came to me because you were worried about the children. And child abuse is what I investigate. Because it's a crime. You are completely twisting my words. I'm sorry I came. I'm just repeating the story that you told me, that's all. May I have those notes, please? No. Are you sure you're just not afraid of losing your job? You do have a green card. Yes, mommy's frightened. You know, mommies and daddies get frightened too sometimes. Not of the boogeyman. Let's say our prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. 
If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Come on in. There's room for a circus in here. I don't want to disturb you. No, it's okay. Maggie has a fever. I guess she does. I've never seen you out here at night. Does that mean you're out here every night? Is that all right? Sure, what's it for? It's my secret luxury. To sit in warm, bubbly water under the stars and look at the silhouette of the mountains and listen to the birds. Pretty far from England. I must sound really silly. Never be embarrassed of being delighted, Julianne. That's something Annie taught me. She seems sad tonight. I've never seen her like that. She's worried. She put the baby monitor in Maggie's room. Could I... Ask me how it started? I'm sorry. I wondered when you would. No, I, I should let you enjoy this in peace. You're very good at all this. I, I'm sort of amazed. Sometimes I just want to cry for Annie. And then I think of what you must feel. And Doc. You want to know why she does it? How it started? That's fair. You're kind of family by now. Are you hungry at all? Sure. It was uh, five years ago. One morning I was sitting here having coffee, like I do every morning. Annie comes into the kitchen and she goes to the stove and she had her back to me. But when she turned, I could see she was sterilizing baby bottles and, and she was holding something in her arms, something I couldn't see. She said, Maggie had kept her up all night with colic. Seemed we had a new baby, whose name was Maggie. I thought it was a joke. And Doc came in, and Annie asked her if Maggie had kept her awake with her crying. My heart stopped. I didn't know what to do. Did you take her to see someone? Psychiatrist? Sure. We went to one of the best in town. We get to the door of his office, and... Annie looks at me with tears in her eyes and says, Please don't make me go in there. He'll take away my baby. Well, I had a pretty good idea what he'd say, so I went in alone and listened. I got as many professional opinions as I could. I learned that she would almost certainly be institutionalized. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Did you say you were hungry? Starving. Good. Me too. I knew this had to be something so deep and desperate, and I thought, what terrible damage it might do to her to just, just rip it away. She, she wouldn't do this without some extraordinary need. Did you talk to her about it? If it was something she could have talked about, I, I don't think it would have happened. You know, for a long time, we, we lived just for each other. My career was just taking off, and if I had a gig in Paris, we'd go. Or a weekend seminar in Stockholm, we'd just go. We loved our life. I'd come home in the middle of the day. 
Then Doc came along and life began to revolve around her. Annie loved being a mother. <laughs> she was in heaven. I was spending more and more time at work. It was hot all of a sudden. And, you know, when that happens, you, see, you just want to go with it. So I was gone a lot of the time. I think Annie blamed herself for the change. She figured she'd messed up somehow, that her, her attention to Doc was somehow driving us apart. So she did the only thing she could do. Do it again, only do it right this time. Maggie. The funny thing is, Maggie didn't make everything right again. I came back. I was totally focused on my family. I, I thought having another child would make Maggie go away, but getting pregnant, Sam, I think just reinforced her conviction that Maggie had made everything right. Well, what about Doc and Sam? I just don't know. I think Doc's stronger for it. We're partners. We talk about it. If there are scars, and I, I look for them, I don't see them. Sam. Sam's okay for now. For now. But what if? I mean, what? If I'm wrong. Well, I do ask myself that. When do you think it will end? When Annie says it does. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. You're gonna have to wait down there because it's six to a row. Oh. Maggie, you and Joey can go together, okay, honey? Come on, Maggie. Six to a car. Watch your step. She couldn't have gone far. Annie, I, I, I thought she was in my lap. They wouldn't let her ride in your lap. Oh, honey, it's okay. Don't worry, I know where she is. Is there a problem? Yeah, my sister wanted to wait, but we think we know where she is. What does she look like? <laughs> she's five years old, and she has brown curly hair and blue eyes, and she's wearing a jean skirt and white sneakers, and her shirt is some... Um, her shirt is... I can't remember what color her shirt um, is. It's a uh, purple one with the balloon. Are you sure? Yeah, because we had a fight about it. She took it out of my drawer without asking. What's her name? Maggie Beeman. Okay, I'll put over the PA system for you. Mom, you and Sam stay here. Joey and I will go find her. Come on. This is a first. I can't believe it. 
kids get lost. I guess it's her turn. We found her. What? Let's go back. One hundred on the nose. Got a fever, baby. Maybe it's just from the excitement of the day. Well, we'll see. Jillian brought you some tea to see if you get thirsty. With honey. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, but I want you to sleep. Which one do you want? Oh, Jillian, can you get me the Grandfather Twilight book over there? I'll be back in a couple minutes to hear your prayers. Good night, Maggie. She'll be all right. I think so. It's just that she's getting you so often. That's not like her. Anyway, um, let's not bother Tim with this. He would just worry unnecessarily. I'm so sorry about, about today. Oh. <laughs> it had a happy ending. Let it go. I was just incredibly stupid. Oh, let it go, Jilly. I have. So's Maggie. Okay. You like this one? Yeah. Okay. Two more. Two more coming up. Okay. I'll get it. Um, it's gonna go on top, right? Yeah. Okay. Is this the Beeman residence? Jilly. Are your parents home? Dad! Why? Oh, Annie. Has, has, there, has there been an accident? No, everything's fine. I mean, there's been no accident. I'm Marie Tan Lee, from the Department of Children and Family Services. Are you Mr. Beeman? Yes, I am. Could we speak privately? Jilly, take the children in the other room. Now. Mr. Beeman, we've had a report of possible irregularities. Irregularities? What the hell does that mean? Mr. Beeman, I need to speak to your children. May we come in? My children? Yes. A report from whom? I'm not at liberty to say. May we come in? I will make this as fast and painless as I can. No. These police officers are here to make sure that I do. And that I'm able to have access to your children privately. Listen, Miss... Whoever the hell you are, you may not have access to my children and you are not coming into my house. Mr. Beeman, I am coming in. That's the law. The law? Yes. Whenever we have a report of possible child abuse, we go to the home involved to verify the charge or to dismiss it. If I have to, I can come in here and take your children. That's the law, sir. Or you can let me in and let me do my job. Why do you have to see them alone? Think about it. Because of some anonymous report you claim to have received? I have received. Well, who the hell from? And what abuse? I can't tell you. The department's policy protects the identity of the informants. If you let me in to see your children, I can determine whether or not this need go any further. If I find no evidence of abuse, this could end right now. I'm calling my lawyer. I don't believe this. Call him. You have three minutes before we come in. Please leave the door open while you make the call.
I know whose room that is. That's my room. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sack. Sack who? Sack of potatoes from Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> Whose room is this? It's, um, uh, uh... This is Maggie's room. So? You'll be hearing from us. Bye, guys. What does that mean? Thank you, Mr. Beeman. Tim, is everything okay? Yeah, it's fine. Where are you? Stuck in traffic. Are you sure everything's okay? Annie, what is this? We're fine. I had the strangest feeling. Look, just come home. We're fine. Okay. Love you. Me too. Well, I guess they're fine. Oh, honey, you're burning up. I'm so... I'm the person who talked to them. It's all my fault. I believe you. What did you do? I... When did you do it? Two months ago. It was before you explained everything to me that night. I, I never thought they'd come here. God, it was just so awful. Yes, it was. What did you do? I went to one of those psychiatrist people. You saw a psychiatrist and... He said that Doc was fine because she knew that Maggie was a fiction. But to worry about Sam. And you didn't want to tell me? No, because... Because I was part of it. So then you went to the child services office. Again, instead of me. I thought that they might be able... But she was so horrible and I left. I was, I was angry and frightened and I walked away and I never, never thought she would do anything. You saw that woman who was here? What did you tell her? You told her that Annie thinks she has an invisible daughter. That I forced Doc into playing along with it and that Sam has spent his entire life around this insanity. You know now that that was wrong. I love you all. I was wrong. Were you? Yes, it's just what you think if you don't understand. That's comforting. But those people in child services are not going to understand. I know. And I'm... I'm so sorry. I'm leaving. You're not leaving. Why? Because you're going to help me fix this. Walking with two cops. That was gross. It was gross. How'd they know about Maggie? Doesn't matter. It was Jillian. I hate her. No, you don't. She loves you. Doc, everybody makes mistakes. And you love her. Not anymore. She's gonna help make this right. But what can they do? Take us away? No. Let's run away. Well, there's an idea. How about an island in the South Pacific? Come on, let's do it. We'll leave tonight. Mom and you and me and Sam, not Jillian. Honey, they can't do anything to us, I promise. But what if they do? What if they try to take us away? Then we run away. Well, what if they come with tanks and more cops and all that? Sneak out the back, right down to the boat in the open sea. You promise? I promise. Tim? Tim, call the doctor. Maggie's really sick. Annie, slow down. If she needs a doctor, I'll take her to him like I always do. No, um, she's too sick to move. My God, he'll make a house call. He's been her doctor her whole life. I don't know. I'll see you, okay? Please. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be okay. I'll just take her to the hospital. I'm going. Honey, you don't have to. I know. Jillian, 
Yes, I, uh, I I have this pain in my stomach, and I, I'm worried it might be an ulcer. Well, we can take a look. Do you have insurance? Yes. Have you read this yet? Here's one I've never heard of before. Seismosaurus. There's T-Rex. Mr. Beeman? Oh, wouldn't you rather mommy wait here and when you come back, you'll be all better? Good. It'll be okay, honey. No. Tim, I want to come. Well, two to one, I voted. I understand you have stomach pain? I do, yes. Where? Uh, here. Could you remove your shirt, please? Well, I had this fever just uh, 24 hours ago, and, and I didn't call my doctor. And Now, the fever's gone, but this pain in my stomach, I just thought it might be related. Really? Hmm. Well, that's pretty interesting, Mr. Beeman, but... Honestly, you seem fine. I mean, I believe you. Uh-huh. If your stomach hurts, your stomach hurts. Right. Then again, it could all be in your mind. Really? Well, hope you feel better. Thanks. I'm, I'm really glad I came. <laughs> uh, doctor, excuse me. Yes. Um, could I have uh, one of those lollipops? Uh, yeah. Sure, I guess so. I have a daughter out front. Of course. Thanks. Nice doctor. It's nothing to worry about. Oh, Maggie, you look better. Was there a prescription? Usual. Aspirin, fluids. Everything's gonna be okay. Hey, Julie. Can I come in? Sure. What's the matter? Oh, it's our going to see that woman at Children's Services today. I guess I'm just frightened. Does your mother know, do you think? No, she doesn't. I'd know. God, this is just... So awful. Come on. There's nothing to worry about. We're gonna be great. You're so sure. Mostly. I hope you're right. Well, like Dad said, if anything does happen, we just run away. Run away? He said that? Yeah. He said we'd run away to the South Pacific. I don't want to run away. <laughs> Mr. Beeman, you may come in now. This is Mr. Beeman. Mr. Beeman, this is Mrs. Carberhorn and Mr. Schmidlin.
I have a lawsuit in here. You invade my home with armed policemen, threaten me with insubstantial evidence, talk to my children alone about what? I don't know. Then send a letter threatening to take my children away if I don't appear today for this meeting. This isn't even a courtroom, and I could lose my family? I hope you've prepared well because I don't intend to stay here long. I'm sorry you feel that way, Mr. Beeman, but where's your wife? Her presence was requested. My wife is at home, sick. Your wife is the crux of this thing, Mr. Beeman. The allegation is that she believes she has a non-existent child and that you support her in this fantasy. That's ludicrous. Where's your wife? I just told you. What about your son? We want to talk to him. I brought my daughter. It kills me that she has to go through this again, and I'm allowing it, but that's it. You got our nanny. You can see her alone, too. She's with us all day, every day. Ask her whatever you like. And you can talk to my daughter, which I hate. But you are not talking to my son. He's in school. My wife is sick. Are we clear on this? Because if we aren't, and you come back into my life after today, believe me, you don't know what trouble is. Anything else? We all understand your attitude. We'll talk to your nanny now. Now, Jillian, we know between ourselves that you're the one that started these allegations. No, I didn't. Excuse me? Well, I, I mean, I did come to see you, that's true, because there was a nanny, a friend of mine from the playground, and she had a problem. She's Irish, actually, and she was a little frightened, so I, I said I would come here and try and find out some information for her. So I did explain to you, or at least I, I started to, a situation that she was dealing with in her home, but it was obvious you couldn't help, so I left. And where this nonsense comes from, I don't know. That's not true, and you know it. What's not true? You told me a story of a seriously disturbed woman, a mother of two small children who believes that she has a third invisible child. Do you honestly deny that? That's the oddest thing I've ever heard. And yes, I deny it. How are you, Rebecca? Fine, thank you. Why am I here? Some children need protecting. That's why we're here. So don't be afraid to say anything you want. We're on your side. Uh-huh. Now, this thing that we talked about before, um, your invisible sister. Invisible sister? You have an invisible sister. My brother has an imaginary friend or two. We call one Maggie, is that what you mean? Actually, Maggie was my invisible friend before she was his. It was kind of like the Tooth Fairy. You grow out of it. Or do you still believe in the Tooth Fairy? No. Me neither. So anyway, I grew out of Maggie. It was fun. But Sam, he liked her. So now Sam's got Maggie for a while. You see, Sam believes in the Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and Maggie. You think I should tell him about Santa Claus and everything. Is that why I'm here? No. We're trying to determine if you and your brother are in a safe environment. We're fine. Isn't it true that your mother thinks she has an invisible daughter? And that you and your father help her with this fantasy? <laughs> no. Do you know, see, this is weird. See, I don't even like knowing there's no Santa Claus. So every year, I help my mom and dad fool Sam into thinking there is a Santa Claus. So we all play along with Maggie, like we play along with Santa Claus. There is a big difference between Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and a particular fantasy that nobody else has, like a sister who doesn't exist. Really? She's not a sister. But that's a good idea. She could be. Santa Claus is an established cultural fantasy. Now, when somebody has a fantasy that nobody else does, Rebecca, that's a very different thing. Oh. Like Martin Luther King. We studied him. He had a dream. No one else had it. 
No, not like him. Like craziness. Santa Claus is sort of crazy if you think about it. I mean, come on. One guy for the whole world in one night. And the thing is, I gotta tell you, even though I know there's no Santa Claus, I still kind of believe in him. I don't even tell my parents this. You won't tell them, will you? So when we're putting out the milk and cookies and stuff that I know Dad's going to eat, and the carrot for the reindeer that I know Mom's going to eat, I still believe he's out there somewhere. I believe in Peter Pan, too. So what are we going to do? Maggie's fun. Is that bad? Could you um, ask your father to come back in? Sure. Mr. Beeman, your daughter is quite impressive. It appears that there's been some mistake. I hope you understand that our motives are to protect the children. That's why we're here. I do. And I'm sorry about my temper. I'm glad you people are here for the people who need you. I'm glad we don't. Doc, there's something I have to tell you. It was me. I'm the one who caused all of this. I'm, I'm sorry. I knew that. Everyone makes mistakes. Race you to the car! <laughs> Mom! Mommy, look! Like. One, two, three. Happy, Happy unbirthday! <laughs> Are you supposed to be in school? Well, Doc and I were playing hooky and we ran into Jilly doing her errands and uh, we all decided to take the day off. We got you something. Look. Oh. It's a horse, a really old horse. It's a beautiful horse. Thank you. What's wrong? Maggie's sicker, a lot sicker. I'm doing what the doctor said. The fever's back. Do you want to go back to the hospital? I don't know. Not now. Um, can we put this in her room? I mean, would you all mind telling her that it's for her? Of course no. not. What is it? Maggie, I'm really worried. Maggie lives in Annie, remember? I just feel so helpless. We are. Annie has all the controls. And when you love someone, you are totally vulnerable. Children teach you that. a beautiful angel. And that must be just for you. Mom, I made you something in school today. Oh. Look at that. What is it? It's a turtle made out of clay. Oh. I'm gonna paint it tomorrow. But I could give it to you unpainted. Painting it would be nice. You look sad as Mackie, okay? Oh, she's a little sick. Hi, Maggie. I made something for you, too. Actually, Mom, could I give yours to Maggie? Of course. Here, Maggie. Hey, Sam. Maggie saw an angel up there in the corner. Do you see it? I see it. Yeah, I see it. 
Is Maggie contagious? No, she's not. Is Maggie going to feel better soon? I don't know. Because I told my teacher I would like to ring Maggie for show and tell. Show and tell Maggie. She could just walk down the hall and she said yes. Well, she has to get better first. Okay. Let's leave Maggie alone with her angel. You know what? Can't be trusted. Can't Cannot be trusted. Oh. Hey, Dad! Yeah. <laughs> smells great. Maggie's coming to show and tell me. Ooh. When she gets better, honey. No, oh, really, you guys. She's going to be fine. The fever's going to break and she'll be fine. Okay? Well, it looks like you have everything under control. How you doing? Great horse, huh? You know why we got it? Well, I know you know. I did pretty well, huh? Move over. You know all those times I thought you were a pain? Wearing your clothes her mom would think you did. Eating your food, fighting with you, doing your artwork. Well, I was thinking, if you had an ordinary handicap, like you were blind or deaf, I'd be doing a lot of stuff for you, right? So, you're invisible. I just want you to know, you're not a pain. Maggie, you're getting sick a lot. Something's changing. I don't know. We have a wonderful family. It's not like any other family, and we may not make sense to other people, but it's our family, and it works, and you're a part of it. I wish I could see you. I wish I could hold you the way Annie does. But I can hold her and I can see her. And maybe through her, you feel it. Yeah, I'm a silly daddy. Okay, kids, let's get a move on. Time for school. All right, you guys. Hop, hop. Your sister died last night in her sleep. It was very peaceful. Remember that angel that you saw waiting in her room? Well, it must have been waiting for her. And now Maggie's with God and with all the angels. Is Maggie an angel? 
Doc, you know too that Maggie's with the angels. Yeah, Mom, I know. Are you okay? I'm sad. For us and for me, but not for Maggie. Mom. What, honey? Is Maggie with God? Mm-hmm. One day Dad will be with God. One day you'll be with God. And Julie, and Doc, and me too. And then we'll all come back, right? I think so. If God wants us to. Mom, next time, I don't want Maggie to be invisible. Okay? Okay. shining brightly wherever you are now. But I know you're still with us. In our hearts, always. Maggie, Sam asked me to say this prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die, 